Hi student, welcome to Manifested Online Classes. My name is uh, Joseph Kimani. So in today's uh, session, I want us we uh, go to topic number three. And uh, the topic number three is all about uh, preparation of uh, financial statements of uh, different entities. And uh, therefore, as far as this particular topic is concerned, we're going to look on uh, how uh, various uh, entities, how uh, various uh, business organizations uh, prepare their financial statements. Uh, one, we are going to look on uh, a preparation of uh, financial statements uh, when we have conversion of uh, a partnership into a limited company or basically which uh, financial statements which accounting records uh, are prepared whenever a partnership business is to be converted into a limited uh, company number two we are going to look on uh, financial statements uh, which are prepared by professional firms basically professional firms are those particular firms uh, which are uh, established to provide a uh, certain professional uh, services to their clients, like maybe the accounting firm, auditing firm, and so on, uh, which financial statement do they prepare uh, at the end of the year. Also, we are going to look on uh, a financial statement uh, prepared by those uh, companies, by those particular firms, uh, which are undertaking uh, what you far as agriculture activities, or basically what you far as the farming, uh, activities and also as far as that particular topic is concerned we're going to look on uh, uh, the recognition and also the accounting treatment of something called the biological asset and something called the agricultural uh, produce uh, in accordance with the international accounting standard number 41. Then uh, from there we're also going to look on uh, the financial statement uh, prepared by <coughs> the pension plans. Pension plans these are uh, the retirement benefit uh, schemes like uh, NSSF, we are going to look on the financial statement uh, uh, which are prepared by such uh, firms of which you are going to see that whenever such uh, firms or basically such uh, uh, trustees uh, are preparing their financial statement, they do that in accordance with international accounting uh, standard number uh, 26. And finally, we are going to look on uh, the preparation of the financial statement by cooperative what? Uh, societies. Cooperative societies essentially are those particular uh, organizations or those particular entities uh, which are formed in order to do what? To promote now the economic well-being of their members. And therefore, we are going to look on the various uh, financial statements uh, which are prepared uh, by such uh, 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 or basically by what if far as what the cooperative uh, society so therefore as far as that particular topic uh, is concerned we are going to uh, cover a uh, five uh, subtopic a uh, uh, five uh, subtopic and in terms of how we shall be covering uh, that particular we are going to cover that particular uh, topic definitely we are going to um to go or basically to discuss what you need to know as far as the preparation of a financial statement by different entities are concerned and then from there uh, for each and every topic we will be looking on uh, some illustration uh, questions uh, mostly from a uh, uh, castnet pass papers and also in each and every topic i'll be giving some uh, assignment uh, which usually i encourage my student uh, to ensure that they attempt it so that they can be able to uh, understand uh, the concept uh, which has been discussed in it and every word uh, topic. So that is uh, basically uh, what we are going to do as far as <coughs> each uh, topic is uh, concerned. So I want us to start with uh, the first uh, <coughs> subtopic, uh, which is about uh, accounting for conversion of uh, partnership business into uh, a limited liability company. So when we talk about uh, converting partnership business into a limited liability company, we can say that this is uh, that particular process of uh, converting now a partnership business into a limited liability uh, company. So mean that here, the partners in a partnership business will mutually agree uh, to dissolve now the partnership uh, business and basically register a new company and then transfer the business, the asset and basically the liabilities of uh, the partnership business into a, a new company uh, which will be formed uh, for that particular word uh, purpose. So therefore, uh, here first of all, we can say that conversion uh, of a partnership business into a limited company, we can say that this uh, entails uh, entails a converting entails converting a partnership a business converting a partnership a business 
into a limited liability company into a limited liability uh, company so in this case there are a number of uh, reasons so actually we can say that the reason is to why now the partners will mutually uh, agree to do that mutually agree to convert the partnership business into a limited liability company is um, to be able to enjoy some of the benefits uh, which they do not enjoy whenever they are conducting that particular business uh, in form of what in form of a partnership. Now, we know that there are a number of um, uh, benefits uh, which are enjoyed by a company or basically by a limited liability company and which are not enjoyed by what if far as what? Partnership business. A good example is that a limited liability company, we say, uh, do have something called perpetual succession, meaning that if something happened now uh, to a member of a company or basically a number of members of the company, that do not in any way affect the life of what? The life of uh, the company. But in, in a partnership business, if something happened to a partner or a number of partners like death, bankruptcy, and so on, that can lead now to the dissolution of what? Of partnership. So therefore, here we have a number of reasons uh, which will make now the partners in a partnership business to do what? Uh, to convert now the partnership business into what? Uh, into uh, a limited liability company. So therefore, you can look on uh, some of the reasons. Reasons of conversion. Reasons uh, of a uh, conversion. So which are some of the reasons uh, which will make now the partners in a partnership business uh, to convert uh, that business into uh, a company? Number one. Uh, we are talking of uh, something called perpetual uh, succession. A uh, perpetual succession. So when we talk about perpetual succession, in other terms, we can refer to this as permanent existence. Basically, what that means is that if something happened to a, uh, to a member of a company, or basically a number of members of the company, that do not in any way affect the life of what? Of the company. In this case, we say that the life of the company is continuous despite something happening to a member. Like if a member is declared bankrupt, if a member dies, if a member is declared to be of unsound mind, that do not in any way affect the life of what? Of the company. The other reason uh, which will make um, the partnership business to be converted into a limited liability company is because a company enjoys something called limited liability. A company enjoys something called the limited liability. What this means is that uh, if the company, for example, is not in a position to pay its debt, then the members of the company will not be called upon to come in and contribute money to pay those particular debts of what? Of the company. Simply because in this case, we say that once a company has uh, been registered with the registrar of companies, a company becomes a legal entity separate and distinct from its members. So therefore, the debt of the company essentially are not the debt of who? Of the member. So therefore, in the event the company is not able to pay its debt, and the members will not be required to come in and contribute money to pay what? The, those particular debts of the company. But basically what we know is that in, in a partnership business, the liability of uh, partners is unlimited. If the partnership business is not able to pay its debt, automatically is upon now the partners to know how those particular debts now will be <coughs> will be will be paid. So the other reason uh, for conversion of uh, partnership business uh, into a limited liability company, we can talk of uh, for expansion purpose. For expansion what? Uh, for expansion uh, purpose. Maybe the partners want to expand their business and. Uh, for that business to be, uh, ex uh, maybe for the partners to be able to open a number of our branches, so they need to convert that particular partnership business into what? Into a limited liability what? Into a limited liability company. And number four, we can also say that the company uh, can be able to use various mechanisms, various uh, mechanisms, mechanisms of raising capital. The company can be able to use various mechanisms of raising what a uh, capital. Basically, what we know is that the company can be able to raise capital using various mechanisms. For example, the company can be able to uh, issue shares. The company can issue uh, can be able to issue debentures uh, to the members of the public, uh, so that it can be able now to do what to raise. A capital and equally the company itself can also be able to go to a or can can be able to borrow a loan from a bank because a company is a, a legal entity so but we know that a partnership business cannot be able to issue share, uh, shares cannot be able to do what uh, to issue debentures in order to do what 
and to raise capital. So therefore, that is the other reason which may address that particular decision by partners uh, to convert now their partnership business into what? Into uh, a limited liability company. So therefore, we have those as actually uh, some of the reasons uh, which make the partners uh, basically to make such a decision of uh, converting the partnership business into what? Into a limited liability company. Now, what happens is that once a partnership business here has been converted into a limited liability company, that particular partnership business will be dissolved and then a new company will be formed to take over uh, the asset, the liabilities and also the business of um, the partnership what? A business. And therefore, from an accounting point of view, uh, we make two sets of accounting entries. One, uh, one set of accounting entries is to close the books of account of the partnership business because you're saying that business will be dissolved. And then the other set of accounting entries is to open the books of account of the new world company because here we are saying a new company will have to be formed to take over the asset, the liabilities, and also what? And also uh, the, uh, that is asset liabilities and the business of the uh, partnership business. So therefore here we can say, that uh, on conversion yes so therefore in this case <coughs> uh, what you're saying here is that uh, on conversion so once the partnership business has been converted into uh, a limited company <coughs> and so we are saying that that partnership business uh, business uh, that is a partnership business will be dissolved and basically a new company here will be formed, uh, which now will take over the asset, the liabilities, and also uh, the business of uh, the partnership what? Uh, business. So therefore, it is very, very important to note that the partnership business will no longer exist, it will be dissolved. And therefore, it is important also to note that here we have now to cross off the books of account of the partnership, and then now uh, a new company will have to be formed. Equally, we have now to do what? To open the books of account of the new company. That's why I'm saying from an accounting point of view here, we make two sets of accounting entries. The first set of accounting entries is to open the books of account of um, the new company. Well, last, the other one is to do what? Is to cross off the books of account of what? <coughs> of um, the partnership. So maybe you can look on now the accounting entries. Accounting entries. Accounting entries so here we are saying two set of accounting entries are made <clears throat> so we can say that two set of accounting are, are made uh, two uh, set of uh, accounting entries uh, are made are uh, made uh, uh, are made uh, to uh, cross to cross the books of account of a partnership and uh, to open a uh, books of account of a <coughs> new company to open the books of account of the new what a uh, company so therefore that is very very important that we make two set of accounting uh, entries here one set of accounting entries <coughs> we are saying is intended to do what to cross the books of account of the partnership and uh, the other set of accounting entry is intended to do what to open the books of account of the new what of the new company so we can start by looking on those accounting entries uh, which are made to cross off the books of account of um, a partnership. Let's start with the accounting entries. Accounting entries to cross off books of account of a partnership. Books of account of a partnership. Accounting entries to cross off books of account of a a partnership. Now, even before you look on those uh, accounting entries uh, which are made to cross over the books of account of the partnership, it is important to note that here we have three uh, three main accounts uh, which are prepared uh, to 
close off the books of account of the partnership. So which are those uh, account? <clears throat> Number one, we have uh, an account which is called realization account. Number two, we have an account which is called a partner's capital account. And then from there, we have another account which is called the purchasing company account. The purchasing company account. So therefore, you can say, So we are seeing the, the, the main accounts uh, here which uh, are prepared to cross off <coughs> the books of uh, accounts of uh, partnership will include what? Number one, we have a realization account. Realization uh, account. Number two, we have partners capital account. Partners capital uh, account. And number three, we have uh, the purchasing company. Purchasing company account. A purchasing company a account. Purchasing company account. So we have those three uh, accounts, uh, which basically we prepare in order to close off the books of account of what? Uh, of uh, the partnership. So then from there, <coughs> we can proceed and look on the accounting entries uh, which we make here uh, and which are intended to do what? To cross off the books of account of the partnership. For us to be able to cross off the books of account of the partnership. So which uh, accounting entries do we make? So we can look on um, those accounting entries. Uh, maybe number one, we can talk of what? Um, we can talk of... Uh, the accounting entry, uh, which is intended to do what? To account for assets taken over. So we can say with the assets, with the assets, number one, with the assets taken over by a new uh, company, with asset taken over by new company, with asset taken over by new company. Uh, what we do here is we debit, <coughs> we debit the account which is called realization account. Realization account, so we debit that particular account. And then we credit uh, the specific asset account. We credit the specific asset uh, account and basically we do this with the netbook value of the asset netbook value of the asset which have been taken over it is important to note that uh, whenever assets are uh, the, the assets of our partnership because remember what you're saying is that this partnership uh, business which has been converted into into a limited company we are saying that this particular partnership business will be dissolved uh, and its asset liabilities and also its business will be taken over by this company. So when crossing off the assets account, or basically uh, when accounting for the asset now which are taken over by the new company, uh, in the books of account of the partnership, we account for those particular assets at the year net book value. But it's also important to note that whenever now the new company is taking over those particular assets, they will be taken over at the fair value but in the books of account of the partnership uh, we cross off the asset account at the net book what value that's why we are saying we account for those particular assets in the books of account of the partnership at the uh, net book value at their net book what a uh, value net book a uh, value and then number two number two we can talk of uh, assets with the assets uh, which are written off asset uh, which are written off. So when talk about assets which are written off, these are those particular assets which will not be taken over by the new company. These are assets which are not taken over by the partners in the partnership business, but these are assets which are written off. Something like maybe uh, something like what? Maybe intangible asset. Like uh, assuming the partnership had intangible asset like maybe copyright, something like that. In most of the cases, that particular asset will be what? Will be written off. So with those particular assets which are written off, we uh, debit the partner's capital account. 
partners a capital uh, account and then we credit the specific asset account we credit the specific uh, asset account uh, still with the netbook value still with the the netbook what <coughs> netbook value number three number three we have uh, those particular assets with assets taken over by partners with asset taken over by partners so we have those particular assets uh, which the partners will take over uh, or which will be transferred now to individual partners so such asset equally are debited in partners capital account and then we credit the specific we credit the specific asset uh, account so that's how we account now for the asset and then from there number four we can talk of uh, liabilities with the liabilities uh, taken over by the new company taken over over by new company so those particular liabilities which are taken over by the new company how do we account for them in the books of account of the partnership we debit the specific liability account specific liability account and then we credit the realization account we credit the realization what uh, account um then from there a uh, number five we can talk of uh, purchase consideration with the purchase consideration purchase a uh, consideration agreed with purchase consideration uh, agreed now what is purchase consideration here when we talk about the purchase consideration we are talking of uh, the amount of money which will be paid to the partners as a result of um, uh, selling their business to the new company so once the partners sell their business now to the new company the partners in this particular partnership business here will be paid by the new company in most of the cases you'll be told that those particular partners were paid by the new company in terms of being issued with the shares or even debentures of the new company but now these partners will have now to be what and to be paid so how do we account for that particular uh, purchase consideration paid uh, to partners so that particular uh, amount of purchase consideration is uh, debited in the account which is called purchasing company account purchasing company account when we talk about the purchasing company we are talking of uh, the new company this new company which has been formed uh, we can refer to it as the purchasing company simply because it is purchasing the business of the uh, partnership it is acquiring the business of the partnership so therefore debit the purchasing company or the new company account new company account and then credit and then credit uh, the realization account credit realization what uh, account credit realization account so that's how we account for the purchase consideration agreed purchase consideration agreed and then from there uh, the new company here automatically will have now to pay that particular purchase consideration so how do we account now for the payment so we can say with the payment of uh, purchase consideration with the payment of a purchase a consideration consideration so once the partners have been paid the purchase consideration how do we account for that particular payment <coughs> how do we account for that payment one we debit uh, the partners we debit the partners capital account partners capital uh, account and then we credit this account here which is called the purchasing a uh, company a uh, account the purchasing company account purchasing company what account so therefore these are uh, the various accounting entries uh, which are made in order to do what to cross off uh, the books of account of uh, the partnership a business the partnership what business is also important to note that the the three main accounts uh, which we prepare in order to cross off the books of account of the partnership we have said are three we have 
the realization account, we have the partner's capital account, and then we have the purchasing company account. Anytime you come across a question uh, for conversion of partnership business into a limited uh, liability company, the examiner mostly will require you to prepare uh, those three uh, account, realization, partner's capital account, and then from there, the purchasing uh, company. So next, I want us to look on uh, the various accounting entries now which are made in order to open the books of account of the new what? A company. Remember, I've said you make two sets of accounting entries. First set of accounting entries is to cross off the books of account of um, the partnership, and that's now what you have done here. Then I want us to look on the accounting entries which are made in order to open the books of account of what? Uh, of uh, the new company here. So we look on the accounting entries. <coughs> So this we can say is number, and we can just say these are accounting entries. Yes, the accounting entries <coughs> uh, to open the books of account of uh, the new company. New company. First of all, uh, which um, are the main accounts uh, which are prepared here. Here we can say we have like two main accounts which are prepared. We have an account which is called the business purchase account and another account which is called the selling uh, firm or the VEDAS uh, account, the VEDAS account. So we can say the main account or the foreign, the foreign are the main account uh, prepared uh, to open books of account of a new uh, company. So which are those uh, main accounts? We have two. Number one, I've said we have something called the business purchase, ac uh, purchase account. Business uh, purchase account. And number two, the selling uh, firm, uh, which is also known as the Vedas account. The Vedas what? Uh, account. Those are the two main accounts uh, which are uh, prepared. Then from there, we can look on uh, the accounting entries. Now, when uh, opening the books of account of uh, the new company here, we, we, we make a number of accounting entries. Actually, we have like three main accounting entries uh, which you make. One, you have to account for the asset which were taken over by the company, by the new company at their fair value. So when accounting for those particular assets in the books of account of the new company, you account for them at their fair value, not at the net book value, but at their fair value. You also account for the liabilities which were taken over and equally for the purchase consideration which was uh, agreed. So therefore, we can say number one, with the asset, uh, taken over with asset taken over over at uh, the uh, fair value uh, fair value so whenever the company uh, is taking over the asset of the partnership it is important to note that those particular assets will be taken over at their fair value the fair value of the asset is the current market value the current market uh, value. So in terms of how we account for those particular assets, we debit the specific asset account, specific asset uh, account, and then we credit the business purchase account. Business uh, purchase what? Uh, account. And basically that is at the fair value, at the fair uh, value. Number two, we can say with the liabilities which are taken over, with the liabilities are taken over, with the liabilities taken over, which are taken over, of which uh, it is also important to note that uh, these particular liabilities are taken over uh, by the new company at the net book, but your liabilities are not revalued. If you acquire a business, you always take over the liabilities at their net book word. But if something, for example, that business we are acquiring had a, a bank loan of 4 million, there is no way you're going to agree with the bank to revalue that loan. It is not possible. But now when, I, uh, when acquiring a business, you always, asset must be revalued to their fair value, to their current market value. But 
that do not happen to liability. So therefore, it is important to, to note that liabilities are always taken over at the uh, book value, not at the fair value. So in terms of how we account for uh, such liabilities, one, we debit business purchase account, a business purchase uh, account, and then we credit, we credit specific liability account, specific liability account. And then number three, uh, we also account for what? Purchase consideration agreed or purchase consideration uh, agreed. Purchase consideration agreed. This is a purchase consideration which the new company will have to pay uh, as a result of acquiring the business of the uh, partnership. So how do we account for that uh, purchase consideration? Uh, one, we debit <coughs> uh, what we refer as uh, the business purchase account. We debit business uh, purchase uh, account and then we credit selling a firm. Selling firm is the partnership or the VEDA uh, account. The VEDA account. The reason why we credit this particular account here, the selling firm or the VEDA's account, is because now the partnership business, um, uh, which has transferred, which has sold its business now to the new company, that partnership business is like a creditor. The company or that partnership business, the company or the partners in a partnership business, some, some amount of money. That's why you can see that account is uh, being credited because that is what is uh, an liability. So therefore, these are the first three main items which you account for. The asset taken over at the fair value, liabilities taken over, and also the purchase consideration taken over. Once you have done that, you have accounted for those three uh, items, you must then proceed and you prepare this particular account here, which is called the business purchase account, and you determine uh, whether now the business of the partnership was acquired by the new company at a goodwill or at a negative uh, goodwill. And actually, uh, when preparing the business purchase account, you only use the, those uh, three uh, items. So we can look on uh, the format of the business a purchase account, business a purchase account. <clears throat> so this particular account here we are saying will be uh, will be prepared from these uh, three uh, accounting entries. Remember these are just uh, any, just a uh, ledger account, this is a ledger account. So therefore, uh, from what we have here, uh, we are saying with those particular assets which are taken over uh, by the new company. In this account, you can see we are saying we do what? We credit them here. So therefore, what we credit in this account is assets uh, which are taken over taken over at their fair value. At their fair value. Credit those particular assets in that account. Number two, uh, we are saying that with those particular liabilities which are taken over liabilities which are taken over they should be taken over over we are saying in this account they are debited so this account will be debited with the liabilities uh, taken over taken over and equally you have to remember we have said that all liabilities will be taken over at their book value liabilities are not revalued and then uh, here, number three, we are saying the purchase consideration which has been agreed, uh, which is to be paid by the company, then you are saying that that one should also be debited in this account. So with the purchase consideration agreed, uh, what we do is that we debit that account. We debit that account and then from there, we proceed and we balance that particular account. This account uh, mostly will have a, a balancing figure. A balancing figure on this side, that is uh, on uh, the credit side, this is a goodwill on acquisition. This is goodwill on what? On acquisition, which is a balancing figure. It basically means that uh, the company, the new company purchased or acquired the business of uh, the partnership at a good deal. But on the other hand, uh, if you have a balancing figure on this side, which is uh, the debit side, 
we refer to that as capital reserve. Capital reserve, uh, which is now the balancing uh, figure. And this particular goodwill, um, basically this is uh, an asset to the company. Is an asset to the company. When the company is preparing the statement of uh, financial position, it will be recorded there as one of the non-current what? A asset. As one of the non-current <coughs> asset. Well, as now a capital reserve. Uh, previously, we used to refer to this as goodwill, but negative goodwill that is, but currently we refer to it as a, a capital reserve. So this one is a component of equity in the new company's statement of financial position. When the new company is preparing now the statement of financial position, this one would be taken there as what? As a component of equity. As a component of what? Of equity. So therefore, uh, basically those are the various accounting entries uh, which are made uh, to account now for the conversion of the partnership business into what? Uh, into a limited liability uh, uh, into a limited liability uh, company. So we take, or basically we, uh, or this lesson will add at that particular point. Uh, see you in the next uh, lesson as we look on an illustration question uh, regarding conversion of a partnership uh, business into a company.